Sports on this Sunday. I'm with Johnson in for Tom Yamas. We begin tonight with the coronavirus pandemic clearly out of control in several parts of the country this holiday weekend. Nearly 130,000 deaths from COVID-19 in the U.S. There is now concern over a possible explosion of cases following huge parties and packed beaches, some with little regard to safety. Florida is reporting more than 10,000 cases in one day, accounting for 20% of new cases nationwide. The state now topping 200,000. Texas now with more than 190,000 cases. Hospitalizations there at a record high. In hard hit Arizona, the mayor of Phoenix now saying the state, one of the last to shut down, reopened way too early. And look at these images that may concern a lot of health officials. Hundreds of people crowded together at a massive lake party in Michigan. President Trump facing backlash over his unfounded claim that 99% of COVID-19 cases are harmless. The head of the FDA refusing to defend that comment. ABC's Trevor Alt leads us off. Tonight, alarming images from around the country of holiday weekend crowds with little regard for the pandemic. At parties like this one on Michigan's Diamond Lake Sandbar, social distancing and mask recommendations seemingly cast aside as some of the country's most prominent states are enduring an extraordinary surge. Florida has exceeded an ember level. It's exceeded a small fire on the stove analogy. This fire has exceeded in Florida and in Texas and Arizona into something that is much larger. Florida now crossing 200,000 confirmed cases. It's 10,000 today alone, accounting for 20% of new cases nationwide. As the cases do rise, increase in hospitalizations will definitely increase as well. This is going to be something that isn't going to go away overnight. In Texas, as the state sets records for new cases and hospitalizations on Saturday, leaders from two of the state's biggest cities now considering stay-at-home orders. If we don't change the trajectory, then I am within two weeks of having our hospitals overrun. We don't have room to experiment, nor should we wait for all the hospital beds to fill and all these people to die before we take drastic action. In California, the Los Angeles County Health Director now requesting hospitals implement decompression plans, saying they might not have enough ICU beds for an incoming surge, while in Arizona, hospitalizations have already hit a record high. We opened way too early in Arizona. We were one of the last states to go to stay at home and one of the first to reemerge. And as more young people test positive nationwide, at least 112 University of Washington fraternity members have contracted the virus. And Penn State University reporting its first student killed by COVID-19. And in Missouri, this young father spent 76 days fighting for his life in the hospital, finally released days before his 24th birthday. It's not a joke. It's not a game. It's definitely not nothing that you want to go through. President Trump in his 4th of July address again downplaying the threat of the virus. We have tested almost 40 million people. By so doing, we show cases, 99% of which are totally harmless. That claim drawing ire today. Listen, this thing is lethal. New Jersey's paid an enormous price. We went through hell. We cannot afford to go through hell again. The FDA commissioner, Dr. Stephen Hahn, would not defend the president's statement. How many cases would you say are harmless? Well, what I'd say is, you know, any case uh, we don't want to have in this country, any death, any case um, is tragic. Nor did he back the president's claim a vaccine will likely be ready long before the end of the year. I can't predict when a vaccine will be available. We will make that judgment based upon those data and that science. But as the country waits for a vaccine, restricted businesses are facing a heavy economic toll. In San Diego, restaurateur Chad Klein says he wants to keep people safe, but ongoing restrictions are like adding a lead weight as his business is sinking. The government is definitely destroying the, the restaurant business. If us closing um, helps the, this effort against coronavirus, then there needs to be restitution for that closure. Many businesses still struggling. Trevor all joins us from New York City. And Trevor, the city is moving into phase three of its reopening tomorrow, but indoor dining will have to wait. Well, with Governor Cuomo and Mayor de Blasio say having seen the impact of people gathering indoors in other locations, it just wouldn't be safe to allow indoor dining here in the city. So now we're seeing more restaurants try to get a little bit more creative and expand their outdoor dining so they can provide at least some service in these tough times. With All right, Trevor, thank you.